Lord God, because he has done great things. We praise you this morning, God. We acknowledge you. Before we ask you for anything this morning, we thank you, Jesus, for all things that you have done. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the word, Father. Bless the word. We're thanking you, Father. We're thanking you for all that you have done. You are a great God and a kind and a just God. So we give you all the attributes of our God. He is omnipresent, Father. He is the Alpha Omega. He is the bridge, the door, the author and finisher of our faith. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Scripture by walking Deacon Randy McCray, followed by a prayer by Deacon John Good. All rise, please. All rise. This morning, we will be reading from Psalms 142, verses 4 to 7. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me, about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Thank you and amen. amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. As we take this time to thank you, we are in your house. We thank you for the angel that watched over us last night as we slept and slumbered. We thank you. We thank you for that touch that touch of love that woke us to another one in your glorious days. We thank you. We thank you that we were allowed to hear our heartbeat as we got out of bed. We thank you. We thank you for our physical health, our well-being. We thank you for that safe trip from our abode to your house. We thank you. We thank you for all things because we know all things flows through you. For you are our Alpha and our Omega. You are our beginning and our end. We know all these things. But most of all, we know about your son. Your son who made the ultimate sacrifice. The sacrifice that let us know how much you love us. That agape love. A love that we will never understand. Never comprehend your faithfulness, your joy, your love, your mercy, your grace. We could go on and on about all the things that you do for us. For you surround us. You are beside us. You are in front of us. You are behind us. You are on top of us. You are underneath us. You surround us with your love, with your compassion with all things, because you are our God, our one and only God, our jealous God, our God who loves us more than we love our own selves, our God who loves the whole world, who can reach from one end of the world to the other. We can reach 
but we can't reach from one side of the room to the other. But our God can do those things and so much more. And we thank you. We thank you that your son made the ultimate sacrifice. But most of all, God, we thank you that we know that we are your children, your beloved children. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, clap your hands, open your mouth, and give God praise. For another week, we, gave, we came to give God praise and glory and honor. Come on, clap your hands, open your mouth, and give God praise. Come on, we give God praise for another week. God, we honor you today. God, we praise you for you are great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. You are holy. You are righteous. You are sovereign. You've been good to us. You've been great to us. You've been kind to us. So we offer sincere praise. We offer sincere worship out of our hearts. God, we tell you thank you. God, we tell you we love you. God, we tell you we adore you. Come on, somebody lift him. Come on, somebody worship him just for a few seconds. Come on. Come on, lift your voice. 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 Come on, lift your voice, victorious people. Come on, he wants you through another week. That's the reason to give him praise. That's the reason to give him worship. That's the reason to honor him. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. We give you God, we praise you. God, we honor you. God, we adore you. God, you're worthy. You're worthy of the clapping of our hands. You're worthy of the opening of our mouth. We tell you thank you. We tell you thank you. Without wrath or doubting. Come on, we tell them thank you. Come on, I need you to come out of yourself today. And take the limits off your worship. Come on, take the limits off your praise. Come on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So since I'm here, I'm going to lift them up. Since I'm here, I'm going to give you glory. Since I'm here, I'm going to tell you thank you. Since I'm here, I'm going to praise your name. Since I'm here, hey, since I'm here, hey, some of y'all sitting like y'all don't know where y'all at. Come on, but he brought you here, so you want to lift your hands and tell him thank you. If that's all you got, tell him thank you. Hey, come on, I feel God right now. I feel God right now. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I came to give God glory. I came to give God praise. I came to lift him up. I didn't come to look at you. I didn't come to see who was here. I didn't come to see what you had on, but I came with a purpose. I came with an expectation, and I came with a reason to lift up Jesus, for he's been worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hey, he's a good God. He's a great God. He's a good God. He's a great God. And he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of your hallelujah. He's worthy of your thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, create a sound. Come on, there's a sound. There's a sound. There's a sound. I'm still waiting to hear it. There's a sound that heaven needs to hear before we sing anybody else's song. There's a sound. What's out of the Marcia? Come on, there's a sound. Yes, come on, create your sound. Come on, there's a sound of the healer. There's a sound of your deliverer. There's a sound that he needs to hear from you. Hallelujah. Go. Hey. Yes, sir. Go. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. Hey. God, you're great. And you're greatly to be praised. Ah, I don't know what he's been to 
you, but I know where he's been to me. That's why I can lift my hands. And that's why I can tell him thank you the way I do. That's why I can praise him the way I do, because he's been good to me. That thing is personal. So we say God is great and greatly to be praised. God is great. Come on, put your hands on it right here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, put your hands together. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Say God is great God and greatly great to be praised. Glory, glory, glory to his name. God is great. I'm going to bless the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Say God is great. God is great. I pray to be praised. Glory, glory, glory to his name. God is great. God is great. I pray to be praised. I'm going to bless the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Say God is great. God is great. I pray to be praised. Glory, glory, glory to his name. God is great. God is great. I pray to be praised. Glory, 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 glory to his name. God is great and great to be praised. I'm going to bless the Lord. Come on, right here. Put your hands together right here. Come on. Come on, I need you clapping your hands this morning. If God's been great to you, come on. I will bow before his majesty. I will live. My hands and say, God is great and great to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Say, I will bow before His majesty. I will lift up my hands and say, God is great and great to be praised. I'm going to bless the Lord. Then I will bow before his majesty. I will lift up my hands and say, God's your praise. I pray that you will be praised. I'm going to bless the Lord. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. I get excited when I think about what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. Oh, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. I get excited when I think about what he's done That's what he's done. 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 He's been my rock. That's what he's done. He's been my wheel. In the middle of the wheel, that's what he's done. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on a solid ground. I got to give him glory, I got to give him glory, I got to give him the glory, I got to give him the glory, I got to testify. He's been so good, first giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. I thank God for him keeping me. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. Oh, I don't know what you come to do. 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 I didn't come to look at you. I didn't come to look at you. I didn't come to look at you. I come to cut my hair. 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 I come to cut my h
I promise you something happen if you just start to clap. Come on. Woo! Hey! I come to clap my hands. My hands. 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 Let me see your clap your 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 hands. Clap for my dear Lord Jesus. 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 Clap for my dear devils in between us. 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 Clap for my dear got the victory. 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 I come to cut my hair. 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 I came to praise His name. 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 Mighty powerful name. Mighty powerful name. Mighty powerful name. Mighty powerful name. Come on, you came to praise Him. Come on. Hey! God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory, glory to His name. God is great and greatly to be praised. I'm gonna bless the Lord of my soul. Now come on, bless Him. 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 
Come on, bless him. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. God, we praise you. God, we lift you. Thank you. Lord, you're great. You are great. You are great. You are the great I am. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the bread of life. So we give you praise. Hey, come on, stay right there. In the vein of worship, come on, lift your hands right here. God, you're great. God, you're great. We thank you for life today. Ah, we thank you for life. For we know if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Is that anybody's testimony? If it had not been for the Lord who was on my thank side, you, thank you. I couldn't stand here today to lift my hands. I couldn't stand here today to tell him thank you. I couldn't stand here today to say, Lord, I love you. So we say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great. Great are you, Lord. Yes, sir. You are life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. I found nobody like you, yeah. Great are you, Lord. Come on, from the side. You give life. You give life. You are love. You are love. You bring light. You bring light to the dark. You give hope. You give hope. You restore. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. We stand and declare that you are great. Great are you, Lord. Hey, the next part it says, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. It's your bread, it's your bread in our love. So we pour. Woo! Come on, somebody pour out your love. It's your bread in our love. So we pour. Hey! It's your bread in our love. So we pour. We pour out our praise. It's your bread. In our lungs, so we pour. Hey, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour. We pour out our love on you, Jesus. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour. Come on now, I need you in this moment. Come on, pour out your love on them. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. There's no God like you. You are great. You are sovereign. You are our ruler. You are our king. You are our Lord. So we pour it out. Pour out. We pour out. We pour out. We pour out. We pour out. Pour out. We pour out. We pour out. We pour out our love on you. We pour out our praise on you. We pour out our worship. We pour out. We pour out. We pour out. We give you everything. We give you everything. We give you hurt. We give you loneliness. We give you sickness. 
We give you no self Pour out. Pour out. Pour out. Pour out. We pour out. We pour out. Come on, make some noise right here. Come on. We love you, Jesus. Say, pour out. Pour out. Pour out. Pour out. Pour out. I give you everything. I give you everything. I leave it at the altar. I leave it at the altar. I cast my cares on you. I cast my cares on you. Because you care for me. Because you love me. When I didn't love myself. God, you love me. So I pour my love. So I pour my love. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour, pour, pour. Pour, pour, pour. God, I need you. God, I need you. Pour out. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord? Ba -ba -da 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 -da. All the earth will. Our hearts will cry. Great are you. Are you, Lord? All the earth will shout. Will our hearts will cry. Will cry. Will cry. Will cry. Great are you, Lord. Are you, Lord? So we lift our voice and we say, It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise. Pour. Come on, sing it. It's your breath. It's your breath. In our love. In our love. So we pour. So we pour out our praise. Come on, pour it out on them. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs. In our love. So we pour. So we pour out our praise. Yes, God. Pour out it's our your breath. It's your breath. In our lungs. In our love. So we pour. Oh. Out our Our lungs, so we pour. Come on, I need to hear the congregation. It's your breath, it's so we pour. Come on, y'all sound good. Come on, sing to the Father. You're singing to Him in our lungs, so we pour. Nobody could do what He's done for you, so why not? It's your, your in our lungs. So we pour. we pour, yes sir, oh, yeah, it's your, your in our lungs. our lungs, so we pour. we pour, come on, I need you to sing it, get it in your spirit, it's your breath, it's your breath. in our lungs, in our it's your breath, it's your breath. In, our in our lungs, it's in the inhales, your breath, in our lungs, in our it all belongs to you God, it all belongs to you, God. It's your in our lungs. So we pour. We pour. Pour out our praise. It's your in our lungs. So we pour. To you only. We say great are you, Lord. Great. You're so great, you're so great, you're so great. Hey. Great are you, Lord. 
You're so loving, God. We call you great. We search all over the world, and we can't find nobody greater than you, God. You're so great. Nobody can do what you do, so we call you great. Nobody heal my body when I need healing. God, you're great. When I was broken and didn't think that I was good enough to praise you, God, you reminded me that you're great. Great in all your ways, great in all your ways, you're so great. Great are you, Lord. Now come on, worship him right there, God, you're great. You're great. You're great. Come on, just stay right there, just stay right there, just keep the music going. I dare you think back on what God has done for you this week that you couldn't do for yourself if you wanted to do. What has God done for you this week that the people who love you couldn't do if they could do it? God has been so great. God has been so good. Every now and then it's good to just sit in the presence of the Lord and let the Spirit just minister to you. As the musicians play, come on, just. How great are you, Lord? We be You Lord and greatly to be praised, God, you're great. Hey. Oh, you're great. You've been faithful, you've been kind, you're great. Been our healer, we call you great. You've been our provider, God, you great. Nobody like you, you're great. Hey. Nobody like you, God, you great. Great. God, you great. Yes, you are, you great. Anybody grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time? I dare you take about 15 seconds. Give God the best praise. Come on, give God the best praise. Come on, I know you can do better than that. I, I, I know, just 15 seconds. I'm not asking for, for everything, but just take a few moments and fill the sanctuary with adoration and praise and celebration. Lord, you're so worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Lord, we thank you. We extol you. We exalt you. We lift you up. We shout hallelujah. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We pray and believe you already feel the spirit of the Lord. Pray that you feel welcome. This ain't our house. This ain't my house. This God's house. We pray that you feel welcome in the Lord's house. We want to take this time now to formally extend our welcome. Will you help me receive Sister Anna Lee Baker, our representative from the hospitality ministry. Let the church say amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Are there any visitors that's visiting today? 
If so, could you please stand for we can formally acknowledge you? You don't have to say anything, not unless God put it on your heart. Amen. Could you please remain standing, my sister? On behalf of our pastor, the angel of this house, the preacher, our teacher, our esquire, our minister staff, Minister Benny McCann, Reverend Amber Munnellin, the chairman of our deacon board, and all the deacons, Deacon Kenneth Chambers, the chairperson of the trustee board, our very young Marsha Duchess DuPont, and all the trustees, but our awesome president of the hospitality, Evangelist Deborah Brick. We, the whole Mount Ali Baptist Church, would like to take this time to welcome you because you could have been worshiping in any other church, but you chose MOBC. So we would like to extend this welcome to you and get your praise on. Because when those praises goes up, those blessings come down. And we also have a song that we sing to all our visitors that's visiting. And we would like to sing this song to you now. So have a blessed service and God bless. A little simple song. We say that the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Stand up and speak to somebody you haven't talked to today. Show them some Jesus joy, Jesus love. A little simple song says the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Everybody say the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So we Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you. 
There's a Jesus in me. There's a Jesus in you. There's a Jesus in me. There's a Jesus in you. There's a Jesus in me. There's a Jesus in you. There's a Jesus in me. Everybody say, hey, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. This is the day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, yeah. Put your hands together. Come on. We're going to sing it one last time. We're going to sing it one last time together. And we're going to move on. Everybody back in their seat now. I need everybody. Oh, easy. Love Jesus in me. Love Jesus in you. Oh, easy. Love Jesus in me. Love Jesus in you. Oh, easy. Love Jesus in me. Love Jesus in you. Oh, easy. Love Jesus in me. It's so easy. Oh, easy. It's so easy to love. Amen. We pray that you feel welcome. We pray that you feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. We want to now turn our attention uh, for our announcement clerk of the morning, Mr. Rudine Seward. Let the church say amen. Good morning, Morale. Here are your ministry updates for Sunday, July 14th. Please keep the following persons uplifted in prayer. Mother Richardson, Mother Battle, Mother Yergin, Janet Stevens, Debbie Barbara Banks, Virginia and Ernest I, Janice and Milton Brown, Tassandra Loreano, Imani Loreano, Valerie Montgomery Lamb, Beverly McCants Gent, Lula Carrier, Dolores Britt Ravenel, Carlton Hill, Juanita Lloyd, Mary Wright, Tammy Meadows, John Waddell, and Austin Gray. Last Sunday, we missed Sandra Myrick Wilson as one of our July birthday celebrants. Sandra, on behalf of your MLBC family, happy birthday. By look at her in the balcony and just wave, amen. <laughs> If your birthday month comes and you don't hear your name for that month, please see Sister McRae so that you can be included in our birthday celebration list. We want everyone to have a shout out for their special day. Amen, amen. Our ministry updates. Tuesday, July 16th, noonday Bible study will be on the prayer line and 7.30 evening Bible study on Zoom and Facebook. Thursday, July 18th at 7 p.m., Community Corners will be on their prayer line. Saturday, July 20th at 8 a.m., Men's Bible Study. 10 a.m. will be Youth Successful Saturday. At 11.30 a.m., Youth Choir Rehearsal. 12 noon, New Members Class. The youth will have a game day after rehearsal. July 21st at 2.30 p.m., our ushers will have their annual sermon. It is time to purchase the Sunday School Commentaries for the four lessons. Please see Sister Beverly McCullough. The cost is $25 for the commentaries and $15 for the flashlights. Please order by Sunday, August 4th to be ready for the September 1st lesson. Tickets for Marsha Celebration available through Zoom at modali at aol.com, or you can see Sister McRae. Final tickets is, final date for tickets is August the 16th, sorry, August the 19th. 
Please note on our new flyer, a change of date and the change of venue. Thank you and have a blessed Sunday. Amen. 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 We thank God for Sister Rudy Seward. I want to ask now if Sister Deborah McCray would make her way to the front of the church. Sister Deborah Amen. McCray would make her way to the front. Come on, let's celebrate her as she comes. Did y'all know that today is Sister McCray's birthday? Deborah McCray. The hardest working women in Mount Ollie Baptist Church. She looking for me. She don't know where I am. She hear my voice. She hear my voice. Ah, uh, but I'm kicking in the door, coming through the back door. We got flowers for you on behalf of myself and the church. Come on, let's celebrate Deborah McCray. We celebrating Deborah McCray. Somebody help her hold these heavy flowers. Come on, we got to get a picture. Come to the front. Today's her 33rd birthday. Amen. We thank God. Look at somebody and say, black don't crack. Black don't crack. Amen. We get some pictures. You want to say something? Just thank all of you for your birthday wishes all morning long. Thank you, love you guys. Amen, we love you too, Sister McCray. We love you too. Amen, we're grateful. It's just nice to be nice, amen. When, when people go above and beyond the call of duty, just to pause and recognize them. Don't wanna keep us long today. We should be out well before one o'clock, amen. Y'all ain't right, y'all cold blooded. I was gone one week and y'all want to act up. That's all right, though. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. We're, we're so glad. How many of y'all know this is a church full of miracles, signs, wonders, and healings? That God continues to show himself. I made an announcement on the prayer line. I want to clarify some business of the church. Uh, the building next door, what happened is I believe it was a slumlord who was trying to take advantage of us. And what they do is they claim damages and foul reports with the city. The city puts a lien on it and all this. And if you don't have the wherewithal or the resources to correct whatever the city says, they end up taking your stuff. But little did they know he picked on the wrong church. <laughs> with the wrong, <laughs> look at him say, we ain't the one, we ain't the one. It, it got so bad and, and it stretched out that with fees and interest and everything, they were trying to charge, they were trying to ask for close to $1.3 million. 1.3 million dollars and that would have been above our insurance coverage and we would have had to pay the difference so what did I do I got on the prayer line I started talking to the prayer warriors I said I'll tell you what we're gonna do we wish no evil upon nobody we want to be fair I build it may have caused him to lose some rent that's all right we're gonna be fair thank God for insurance though I want to tell you, they started off with a number of like 1.3. By the time it was done, it was $247,000. Over $1 million knocked off. Don't tell me what God can't do. Amen. So I wanted to clarify that. We give God praise. We got to pray our way. We got our last inspection. We believe in Con Edison coming up August 8th. We're trying to get this built. I'm telling everything you can think of has come against us. But the devil is a liar. What the devil meant for bad, God is going to work it for good. And we know that God has the final say. Amen. I want to announce that. So glad to see Sister Sharp, Rosemary Sharp here, who lost her sister. We've been praying for you. So good to see you. Make sure y'all stand up, Sister Sharp, so we can just put a little extra love on you. If y'all see her today, give her a little extra love. Amen. So glad to see Janice Brown back. Amen. We've been missing you. Look good in her blue and her glasses. I mean, come on now. Amen. Uh, we thank God. Tell me your name again, Mother. Gloria Holmes. Gloria Holmes. We, I don't know if y'all remember. We prayed for Sister Gloria Holmes. The front of the church, she had to go have a surgery. And the Lord worked it out, cleaned it up, fixed it. She's here to praise God today. Will y'all help me give God some praise that God is still working miracles and still healing and turning around. I told y'all, every time our 90... 98 right 98 year young member is here mother cleo richardson we gonna shout her out come on let's give god some praise mother richardson is here glad to have sister sadie nelson back keeping her in prayer 
loss of her brother, uh, keeping Auntie Juanita in prayer, Sister uh, Doretha Phillips' sister, keeping her in prayer, and keeping each and every one of us in prayer. I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did, charge it to my head and not my heart. But I thank God. See, good to see Brother Gibson back, Kenneth Gibson back. Uh, for, for being away for a little while. Just good to see everyone. I'm glad to be back here. I hope you're excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 Just one, one clarification. Uh, this Saturday, this Saturday at 9 a.m., all men, all men, 9 a.m. Remember, this Saturday we're doing a little different. This Saturday we're going to Lindenwood. We're going to Lindenwood Diner at 9 a.m. Just, yeah, just the men. And don't none of y'all show up trying to crash our party either. Boy, I tell you, I tell you. I love Mount Ollie, boy. We're going to have to mic the crowd. Amen. 9 a.m., 9 a.m. We'll be at Lindenwood Diner. Everybody knows where Lindenwood is for the men at 9 a.m. Uh, and because of that, what we're going to do is we're just going to have choir rehearsal. Just choir rehearsal for the youth at 1130. I don't want to cut short my time with the brothers. And I want to be able to, to be here for the youth. We're going to have choir rehearsal from 1130 to 1. 1130 to 1. Following choir rehearsal, we're going to have a game day. Game day for all of our youth in the church. Particularly asking the men to come out because we're going to have some Xbox, PlayStation tournaments set up. We're going to have some TVs. Because uh, some of these kids said they the best at Madden. We're going to put it to the test. Amen. So we're going to have uh, chess. We're playing chess. We're going to have game, game day. The whole entire church is invited out. If you want to come out to game day, we're going to have think, hot dogs and food. Uh, but that will be starting around 1 p.m. after choir rehearsal. We just want to have a day of fun and fellowship, really with the emphasis on our youth. So want to see all y'all on the back row here next Saturday. Amen. Uh, so want to, want to clarify that. Um, and then there are flyers in the back for Sister DuPont. We had to change the date. The response was so overwhelming that I was worried that Mount Ollie wasn't going to be in there. And y'all think I'm going to throw a party that Mount Holly ain't going to be at? No, no, no. So we have to change the date in the venue because I want to make sure everybody who want to go can go. Uh, I know the price is a little much. If you're going to start a payment plan, you can start now. Uh, we'll help you manage it. Everybody say layaway, layaway. Lay Amen. Say put something on it. You can put something on it. And, and oftentimes if we do that, so good to have Yvonne burrows back with us she was down south taking care of her mother her mother had knee surgery i'm so excited to have her back and we thank god she got a husband here with us today amen i probably shouldn't shout him out he's supposed to be at his church that's all right we working on you we working on you we working on you amen so glad to have the deacons and ministers and everyone here <laughs> amen amen i believe that concludes uh, all of our announcements, I believe that concludes all of our announcements. Again, happy birthday to Sister McCray. To all of you who had birthdays, shout out to Sister Sandra Myrick Wilson. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. 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 It's offering time. It's time. time out, psych. I messed up. We got to have a medical moment, our wellness moment. Let's prepare now for our wellness moment coming from Deacon Good. Let the church say amen. Mount Ali Baptist Church Health and Wellness Report. We all know that this is God's house, a house of signs, wonders, and miracles. And when I look out at the audience, I look at signs, wonders, and miracles. We are all touched by God. But we also understand that knowledge is power. So I'm going to bring some knowledge to you. I'm talking about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a brain condition that pro causes a progressive decline in memory and thinking, learning, and organization skills. It, ex it eventually affects a person's ability to carry out basic daily activities. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Alzheimer's disease is currently the seventh leading cause of death in this country. The signs of Alzheimer's worsens over time. Researchers believe the disease process may start 10 years or more before the first signs appear. Most commonly affects um, people over, over the age of 65. Dementia describes the state of a person's mental fa uh, function. It is not a specific disease. It is a decline in mental function. 
from a previous higher level that's, th that's severe enough to interfere with daily living. A person with dementia has two or more of these specific dis dif difficulties, including a change or, or decline. Memory, reasoning, and handling of complex text, language, understanding the physical form and space relationships and behavior personalities. Dementia develops when infections or disease impacts the parts of your brain involved with learning, memory, and decision making or language. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Some people develop Alzheimer's disease before the age of 64, typically in their own for in their 40s and 50s. This is called early onset. Alzheimer's disease is common. It affects approximately 24 million people across the world. One in 10 persons older than 65 and nearly one third of people older than 95 have this condition. Alzheimer's disease organizations and health providers use various terms to describe the stages of Alzheimer's disease based on signs. If the terms vary, the stages all follow the same pattern. You have to watch out for the signs. They're, they are described as mild, moderate, and severe, or early, middle, and late. The signs and symptoms of um, Alzheimer's disease is as follows. Memory loss, reasoning and handling of complex tasks, language, understanding physical forms and space relationships, behavior and personalities, having difficulty finding the right words to express thoughts, <coughs> losing or misplacing objects more than usual, having difficulty making plans or organ organizing, having difficulty problem solving, taking longer to, to complete routine daily tasks. As I said earlier, this is a house of signs, wonders, and miracles. And as the house of signs, miracles, and wonders, we have all been affected by this. And, I'm, and what we can do is get together and learn to understand, but most of all, knowing that there are things that we can do to make this disease not as, as impactful as unfortunately it is. And, and I thank you all for listening to the wellness report. Have a wonderful and a blessed day. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Deacon Good. This is something serious. Now, how many of y'all know the devil tries to attack our mind every chance he gets? And what we want to do, I'm going to talk about that in the message today. We're going to talk about mental health, talk about emotional health, uh, dealing with grief and sorrow. So it's going to be a good message today. But how do you avoid that? I'm, I'm really concerned. You got to stay mentally active. If your, your, your mind is a muscle, and if you don't work it, it goes through dystrophy. Yes. So stay mentally active. Stay physically active. Yes, sir. You got to eat well. Yes. I know that fried chicken is a gospel bird, but save it for Sunday. Yes. Save it for Sunday. Come on. Amen, somebody. Amen. We got to eat better. We got to do better. You got to get enough sleep. How many of you know that when you sleep, that's when the brain flushes the toxins and the bad chemicals out of your brain and your body? That if you don't get enough sleep, you will drive yourself crazy. Yes, sir. Got to get enough sleep. Stay organized. Stay organized. Stay socially engaged and manage chronic health problems. This is something else that I did. I, went, I, I had a memory loss issue when I, I caught COVID. I had long haul syndrome uh, where I had a foggy brain. I couldn't remember things. I was leaving my keys everywhere, just forgetting a lot of stuff. And, you know, the Lord has blessed me and I'm good now. But while I was going through it, if you find yourself with that, you got to create uh, patterns and routines. Be intentional about leaving your keys in the same place. Start developing habits. Checks. All right, I got five things I walk out with every day. My phone, my wallet, my keys. You figure out your other two. But doing things like that, amen? If it happens, don't just take it, fight back. Or y'all praying with me. If you feel it, don't just take it, Fight back in Jesus' name. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and watch this, a sound, a sound mind. Claim it over yourself, a sound mind. You got to remember the Holy Spirit said he'll bring to remembrance. I wish I had some help in here. What you need when you need it. So you got to respond in faith. Respond with the word of God. 
Whatever you go through in life, quit just taking it. In the name of Jesus, fight back. Y'all with me? Y'all got it. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. I cannot grow. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over and poured out. That is our hope. Listen, why do we tithe? Because the Lord said to do it. And I don't know about y'all. I just have found life is easier when you do what the Lord says do. That, that God keeps his word. His word has established his response to our seed. The word has established God's response to our seed. So it really is a question of faith. It's a question of priority. It's a question of do you believe God's word? We are a tithing church. We believe the tithe is $1 for every $10. And this is what we believe. If I trust God with the one dollar, he's going to protect my nine dollars. I'd rather have nine dollars with the Lord on my side than ten dollars with a hole in my pocket. And listen to what the Lord has promised that he will throw open the windows of heaven. I say it all the time because it's still true. There's always more windows than doors. And listen to the generosity of God. He ain't going to trickle, drip. He ain't tripping. He's going to pour out a blessing. Thanks. That you won't have room enough to receive. Anybody else at the place, I don't want a whole lot more for myself. If the Lord don't do nothing else, God been so good to me, I'm all right. I'm at the place, I want more so I can bless somebody else. I, I thought that'd be somebody else's testimony. It ain't about me no more. I want to be blessed so I can bless somebody else. Think about financial stress. Come on, it's the number one cause of divorce. Y'all ain't going to pray with me up in here. Number one cause of, of health-related issues. You stressing, strain, worried about all of these things. Quit stressing and try God. The Lord said, try me now in this. See if I'm true. We try God for everything else. Try God. So today as we prepare, there are four ways to give. I want you to pray over your seed. Pray over your offering. I know many gave the first Sunday, so this may be an offering week. The tithe is a tenth. The offering is above and beyond the tithe. Every time we come to the house of the Lord, we don't want to come empty-handed. Anybody else grew up like that? Don't go to nobody's house empty-handed. Come with something. That's just good manners, y'all. So, Lord, we thank you now in the name of Jesus that what we have in our hand first came from your hand. We thank you, Lord, that even when we hadn't been trustworthy, you still trusted us. Even when we skipped and forgot and missed, God, you didn't skip uh, uh, putting breath in our bodies. You didn't allow our, our hearts to stop working because we weren't diligent. So, Lord, we say thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you've given us another chance. So, Lord, with this other chance, help us to do the right thing. Help us to give as you have given to us. You ain't never looking for what we ain't got. You ain't never looking for what we ain't got. Everything we got came from you. All you're asking us to do is to trust you. To give back a portion. Of what you've given us. That the whole may be blessed. Dear Lord, please hear our sincere prayer. There's some things you put on my heart to do in this community, to do it for this church, to do for black people, to do for our nation. And the truth is, Lord, it takes resources. So you who are the provider, it's my prayer, God, that you bless the congregation where people get new jobs, get promotions. Somebody can win the lottery as long as they pay their tithes. It's my blessing. It's my blessing. It's my prayer. Lord, I want you to bless the people because I trust that the people are going to bless your house. I want you to bless the people because I trust that your people are going to bless your house. This is our humble and sincere prayer. It's in the name of Jesus. We do pray and say amen, amen, 
and amen again. We're going to get some good marching music. Going to start in the balcony to make our way down and around. If you give electronically, you can still come down and just tap the basket with your phone as a demonstration. I'm with you, Pastor Bacchus. I'm with you, Mount Ali. We're in this together. Amen? Amen. 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 Everybody say bless. Your favor, in your favor, in your favor, 
in your favor. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Say yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 it's going to work in your I know we will. Let's say they. God. It's going to work in your favor. I know we will. 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 I know, I know we will. I know we will. I know we will. We're back with us. We're back in the city. We're back in the field. We're back when we come and when we go. We have now every day. Sickness and poverty. Amen. That was so good. They just cut it off. I was ready to keep going. We are blessed. It's like, all right, then. <laughs> they like, we ready for the word. It's preaching time. It's preaching time. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? Today, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to jump to three passages I want to establish the foundation for how we got here, but I do want to read this passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And the message today is entitled, What to Do When You Feel Sorry. What, what to do when you feel sorry. When you feel convicted. When you feel grief, you feel down. The text teaches us there's a godly way to go through the process. There's a godly way, there's an ungodly way. And what we want to do is make sure that we are educated and equipped on how to go through some stuff. You do know you're going to go through some stuff in life. I know, I know I'm the only sinner up in here. I was just making sure I was in the right place. The Bible says all have sinned and fell short of glory. Now, the reality is, is the truth be told, we're going to sin and mess up sometimes. And the real question comes, what do I do in response? What do I do to shift, to change? How do I show God that I am sincere in my apology, in my repentance? Now, why is this message important? This message is important. It has two things. One, it's about mental health. As I was studying the word of God, and we're going to read it, this is the Lord, look, what the Lord has placed on my heart, why I'm teaching on this today. That there may be people who have unconfessed sins, things you ain't dealt with that's causing physical ailments, blockages, problems in our lives. And I got that directly from the word. And if this is going to be a house of miracles, signs, and wonders, I thought that it was important that we teach on this because I don't want anybody missing your healing just because you won't admit you messed up. As I survey the world and minister on the streets, one of the things that God has laid heavy on my heart, there are so many people who, who can be delivered, who can be healed, they just haven't been taught properly. And it is my hope and my prayer that this will be one of the foundational messages that, that helps us to get over that hurdle. The Lord know you sinned. The Lord know you gonna sin. That's why he sent his son Jesus. You ain't surprised God with your sin. I thought I'd get a few more amens right there. You ain't shocked God. God knows. He, he knew before you did it. But what I love about God is he's given us a way to show that we truly are repenting. Sorry. All right. So let's start. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I'm just going to read 8 through 12, uh, give a few words of introduction, and then we'll, I know it's small, but, but in your phone should be bigger. 
2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm going to read verse 8 through 12. Just a little context. You don't have to stand up yet. You can sit down for just one second. Just one second. Context of 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians is response to 1 Corinthians. Oh, yeah. And if you've ever read 1 Corinthians, you know there was a lot of stuff happening in the church. Yeah. You had one brother who was sleeping with his dad's new wife. Stepmom, thank you. You had cases of incest. You had cases of idolatry. They, th things were just bad, and Paul had to write a hard letter of rebuke, of telling them where they were wrong, and then this is the response of what happened. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 through 12. If you want to stand, this would be the appropriate time. This is from the New King James translation of the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I really invite you to read 6 through 12, but for the sake of space, we're just doing 8 through 12 now. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, for I perceive that the same epistle, that's just a word for a letter, the same epistle made you sorry. Though only for a while. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a what? Godly manner. If there's a godly manner, there's an ungodly manner. You were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10 and 11 is really the emphasis of this whole message. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. But the sorrow of the world produces, that's what we're trying to avoid. That if you don't know how to deal with when you're sorry, when you're wrong, when things are not going right in your life, the Bible says that sorrow can produce death. That you might not suffer loss for us in anything. Verse 10, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted. But the sorrow of the world produces death. For observe this very thing that you sorrowed in a godly manner. For observe, watch, pay attention to this very thing that you sorrowed in a Godly manner. That means that's a godly manner. That's a way to do it. You can do it. Now listen to what he says. This is the description of what being sorry in a godly manner looks like. What diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourselves. What indignation. What fear. What vehement desire. What zeal. And then finally, what vindication. In all things you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Therefore, although I wrote to you, I did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong, nor for the sake of him who suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear to you. Thus ends the reading of the word of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, on the screen was 8 through 12. When you get a chance, read 6 through 12. I want to talk with the help of the Lord for just a few moments from this thought, what to do when you feel sorry. What to do when you feel sorry. Uh, so I want to first establish the foundation. Foundation. One of the things I learned in law school, the rules of evidence, that sometimes we make logical leaps that other people didn't leap with us. So you got to build a bridge to get to the point you're trying to explain. So can I build the bridge first? I want to build this bridge. Let's go to Mark chapter 2, the gospel of Mark uh, chapter 2. It'll come up on the screen in just one second. Mark chapter 2. I believe one of the, the assignments that God has, has placed on my life is about miracles, signs, wonders, and healing. Yes. So in my study of that, uh, you can look at the entire passage, but uh, just to give us some context, Mark chapter 2 is a story of the four friends of the paralytic who went to hear Jesus, and because the house where Jesus is sitting was so full, they couldn't get in. They didn't get frustrated. They didn't turn away. What they do? They said, we're going to go up on the roof. 
And they sitting in there listening to Jesus teach, and all of a sudden they see stuff fall in debris. They look behind them to make sure, man, you ain't playing, are you? know how folks will play with you and tap you on the back of your head and turn around. They trying to figure out what's going on, and then more stuff just keep falling from the roof. And they look up and they see four friends letting down their paralytic friend on the bed. And the Bible says, this is where we pick up, verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, not the paralytic's faith. Their faith. That's why I was praying for people matters. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. Some of the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive God? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Skip down and focus on verse 9. Jesus said, all right, uh, uh, yeah, I, I perceive what y'all saying in your heart. Why y'all reason about these things? This is the point. Verse 9. Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk? Now, the two put in that parallel context seem to suggest that they're the same thing. That if I say your sins are forgiven, or I say, arise, take up your bed and walk, it's the same outcome. Are y'all praying? So it seems to me that sin may be keeping people from arising, taking up their bed and walk. Y'all praying with me? Now notice what it says, that Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And their whole beef was, who can forgive sins but God alone? And here it is that we all have sinned, and God has forgiven us, but he can only forgive you if you ask for forgiveness. Are y'all praying with me? And the whole point is that maybe, I can't speak, I don't know this man in the text. All I'm doing is using my, my training to, 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 to glean from it that, that maybe the reason he was in the state that he was in, because he had some unconfessed sins. See, here it is that all we got to do is confess out of our mouth and God does the rest. God has lowered the bar. He's made it simple for us to access his forgiveness called grace. His forgiveness called mercy. So it became important to me to try to figure out. I don't want anybody around me if all you got to do is confess your sins and you can be healed to not be healed. We go out and minister in the community as people that we see with addictions with dependencies, and a lot of the time, what is it connected to? Childhood traumas. Yes, sir. Connected to things that they hope no one ever finds out about. Maybe they didn't do it, somebody did something to them. Right, right. That there are all types of things that we suppress just so we can survive on a day-to-day -day basis. And the danger is maybe some of the stuff we're suppressing may be causing some problems in our bodies. Some of the stuff that we ain't dealt with. I wish I had some help up in here. See, the problem with sin is that sin is a lot like cancer. That if you diagnose it early and treat it and deal with it, it's not deadly. I wish I had some help up in here. But, but the problem is when you don't deal with it, you look over it, you don't go to the doctor, do what you're supposed to do, what could have been removed from a 30-minute surgery, now you got to get your whole arm cut off. Now it's spread throughout the whole body and you got a whole worse situation than if you just would have said, Lord, I confess I messed up. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I need your forgiveness. And do it with the confidence that God has said, you already forgiven. That God has thrown your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west is how far God has separated you from your sins. You just got to release and let go. I'm preaching to y'all not as a perfect person, but I'm preaching to myself too. So nobody is confused. So how did you get here? Because I saw something in Mark chapter 2. So it made me start to think about sin. What is sin? Sin, I want you to think about a, a bow and arrow. And think about a target. Y'all know that there's different rings. And what happens is that when we sin, essentially, we're shooting an arrow, but we miss the mark. Y'all praying with me that, 
that, that, that, that, that, that when we're not doing what God has called us to do, we shoot it in the wrong direction, missing the mark. Now, here it is, saints of God. This is where I pray that we're moving. If you ever seen anybody who, who's worked with a bow and arrow, once you practice, you get better and better. That you start off not even getting it on the board. I wish I had some help up in here. Then you, you, you start moving closer and closer where you start getting on the outside. Then you get the outside ring and you start moving in because the more you practice. I wish I had some help up in here. The better you get. Has anybody ever discovered, maybe I'm just by myself, that, that sometimes I shot and I've been way off the board. Looked like I was shooting at something else. But the more I keep on practicing. I wish I had some help up in here. The more I keep on praying, the more I keep on reading my word, the more I keep on fasting, the more I keep on coming to church, I'm getting closer and closer to where I'm hitting the mark on a more consistent basis. And the problem is there's people who want to hit the mark, but you won't do the work, won't put in the practice, and you're wondering why you keep getting things wrong is because you're not doing the work. Every day you're taking a shot, you might as well get good at it so you can hit the mark. So sin is hitting the mark. Now, what happens is, is that the devil wants to do everything he can to confuse us about what sin is. To cloud our minds so that we can take a, a, a casual stance. It doesn't bother us. We're going to get to it in the text. But let's go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verses 5 through 8. John chapter 16, verses 5 through 8. It's about to come up on the screen. I, I had a typo. I apologize. It's going to say John 18, but it should be John 16. I want to talk about where conviction comes from and what it means. Right? That you don't know you're sinning until you feel it or you know something, right? Or somebody points it out to you. Now, the work of the Holy Spirit is to point us out when we're wrong and we know we're wrong. But the work of the Holy Spirit is also to point out when we're right and we know we're right. So for this first movement, I want to talk about the positive and the negative side of conviction. That, that is two sides to one coin. All right? That, let me just read the text and I'll explain it. We're going to be out by 1 o'clock, I promise y'all. I'm already halfway through. But now I go away to him who sent me. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples. Again, in John chapter 16, verses 5 through 11. John chapter 16, verses 5 through 11. But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you, what? Sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. We know the helper is the Holy Spirit, right? If I don't go, then the Holy Spirit, the helper, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, listen to this, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. I want to break those th three things down. I want to talk about the positive negative side of conviction. That the Lord has given us the helper, the Holy Spirit. Now that's particular language that most of us don't think it's a help when the Holy Spirit convicts us. I got two amens right there. I know y'all still up. Amen. We need a seventh inning stretch that, 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 that the truth is, y'all, that the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, it's to your advantage that you feel convicted. It's to your advantage. I'm trying to help you feel something. Now, now, now how does it break it down? I said positive, negative, that convict the world of sin, missing the mark. We understand that. And of righteousness. Right? And, and of judgment. I want to break those down. Sin is pretty self-explanatory. That Go back to the, to, the, to the text real quick. Now, sin, because you do not believe in me. That ultimately, when we miss the mark, it's because we ain't really believing what Jesus has said. We really thinking that our way is better than God's way. We're choosing what we want over what God wants. 
So in that moment, we try to play God and say, God, I know your word says this, but I think I'm going to do this. So what happens is sin because you do not believe in me. Like that when you believe in somebody, don't you do what they tell you to do? But if somebody's a liar, I do the opposite of what they tell me to do most of the time. Y'all praying with me? Now here it is that of sin because you do not believe in righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Now, you can be convicted of sin, but you also can have the conviction that you write and standing on the right side of history. Now, how do you know it? Because Jesus said, you're going to look for me and I ain't here no more. And when you look for me and I ain't here no more, that means that what I said is true. That means destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up again. That means that nothing shall separate me from the love of God in, in Christ Jesus. It's saying that if that, because you do know they would have done everything they can to discover the body of Jesus. You do know, I told, I, I preached a couple weeks ago, they paid soldiers to lie and say that the body of Jesus was stole by disciples. If they were doing it then, they're going to do it today. The devil ain't changed his strategy. So you got to know when you're standing for right and righteousness, you got to know you standing on the word. When you standing on your own word, can anybody admit I get kind of nervous? When it's what I think and what I want, but I'm trying to get to the place where Proverbs 3 and 5 really comes true in my life. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. I wish I had some Bible readers that'll help me. Lean not unto your own understanding, but you ought to add verse 6. And in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And guess what he going to do, y'all? He going to direct your path. Now, here it is. I'm convicted of righteousness because when I see wrong and I know right. I'm convicted of righteousness when I know I got to do what God is telling me to do, even when don't nobody like it. If people talk about me, it don't matter, because if I know that the helper, the Holy Spirit has laid that thing in my soul, in my heart, I'll stand by myself. I'll fight any battle. I'll cross any ocean. I'll climb any mountain, because if God be for me, who can be against me? That he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. You can't be afraid to stand up for what's right. You can't be afraid to speak truth to powers. You can't be afraid to say what thus saith the Lord. Because if you stand up for God, is there anybody who's discovered the Lord will stand up for you? If you fight for the Lord, anybody discovered that the Lord will fight for you? If you stand strong in the Lord, the Lord will give you the strength to stand if you keep your hand in the unchanging hand of God. That conviction works both ways. Part of it is sin, but a part of it is when, when you know you're right. You got to have something on the inside of you that keeps you going. Because everything and everybody going to try to get you off track. But you got to know that you 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 know. Y'all ain't going to help me. That I know that I know that I know that I know I'm on the Lord's side. I'm standing for the word. And because I'm standing for God, I ain't got nothing to worry about. Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Matter of fact, I'm not just a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. See, the problem today is that the world has lost conviction. People don't stand for nothing. Mama said it like this. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall. Y'all better help me preach this message today. So it's recognizing when the Holy Spirit comes, it's coming to help me either fix something I got wrong or keep doing the right thing. Sin and righteousness. Right now, when it comes, let's go back to the text. You don't have to pull it up yet, but let me set up Second Corinthians chapter seven for you again. That what the devil meant for bad, God got a way of working it for good. We wouldn't have the benefit of Second Corinthians if the church at Corinth hadn't been acting a fool. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in here. Paul's letters were dealing with real reality. 
This is not some eloquent composition to be added to the Jewish scriptures or to, to the canon of, of faith. No, he dealing with real life stuff, real life situations. And in the midst of dealing with real life stuff and real life situations, an issue broke out because Paul said, y'all wrong and y'all know y'all wrong. Yeah. Yes, you wrong, you know you wrong. And when Paul first went to try to talk to him about it, they got swole up on Paul. He big with them letters, but he's small in presence. He tough on paper, but he a little shrimp when he show up. They talking bad and he's defending his apostleship, the authenticity of him being a Hebrew of Hebrews. We, we read of this, but then something wonderful happened. Paul is attacked in Macedonia. He's having problems. He sent Titus to bring back word. What is the status of my beloved church in Corinth? And then when Titus arrives, the Bible, that's why I want you to read, chapter 7 says that his joy is full. He's excited because Titus brings back a good word. And what is a good word that, Tom, that, that, that Titus brought back? Is that the people, although they missed the mark and got off track, they back on track now. They back on track. All of us sometimes are going to miss the mark. All of us sometimes going to fall off the wagon, get off track. It don't, I, I ain't saying it don't matter because we shouldn't do it. But what matters the most is what you do afterwards. Do you stay down? Do you stay out? Do you stay depressed? Do you say sad, whooping, woe is me? No. Nah. How are you going to serve a powerful God but don't deal with situations powerfully? I'm sick and tired of Christians talking trash. Don't, don't walk around here bragging on my God, but you weak, busted, disgusted, something always wrong, woe is me. You get a little paper cut. Jesus got cut with nails in his hands and a spear in his side because somebody said something wrong to you. Jesus was hanging on the cross and they said, you saved others. Come on down and save yourself and us too. How we going to serve a Christ who that big, bag, strong and bold and we walking around here weak? This is a generation we got to pray for, y'all. I'm going somewhere. Y'all hang with me. This is a generation who will cry about anything and everything. I never seen people so easily offended. People who set up unrealistic expectations that they can't fulfill themselves and then mad at you because you slip up. I don't know what's wrong with this generation, y'all. Here it is. Here it is. As we get ready to go back to 2 Corinthians. And here it is. What Paul is saying is that when you get off track, there's a godly manner to deal with it. And he's saying it's so important because only the godly manner leads to true repentance and salvation. But the worldly manner, that's going to lead to death. Can I paint that picture for you? That when you go through things, if you do somebody wrong, if you wrong, God wants you to get back up again and dust yourself off and handle your business. So let me say it to this side because y'all act like y'all didn't get it. If you do wrong, you mess up. The Lord said, don't throw no pity party, inviting all of your friends, going on social media, on Facebook, talking about pray for me and all of that. Now, dust yourself off, get back up again, get back on track and handle your business for the Lord. Social media is not your diary. Facebook is not your journal. You better talk to the Lord about it. Because you telling folks your business who don't care about you, they going to use it against you. You ought to keep your mouth shut. Quit sending an email and get down on your knees and talk with Jesus. He may not answer email, but I believe there's some witnesses that can testify. He'll answer an email. Just get down on your knees and have a little talk with Jesus. And won't he make everything all right? Just have a little talk with Jesus. Quit 
talking to people who ain't going to help you anyway. Just, just have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Well, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Y'all about to get me excited. Oh, Lord. Here it is, here it is. Let's get back, let's get back. That, that, that the world's way, the Bible says, leads to death. Now think about it. It's death to relationships. Death to, death to possibilities in your life. Death to the potential that God has destined for you. We get stuck. See, the world wants you going in a destructive loop. A destructive cycle where you can't ever get over it. It keeps playing over in your mind over and over again. And you got to know why that's happening because the devil only know how to do one thing, y'all. Steal. Kill. Come on, why are you acting like the devil brand new? That's all he know how to do. Steal, kill, destroy, and lie. That's all he know how to do. So why are you surprised when he show up? You know what he there for. When the milkman knock on your door back in the day, I know we go to the grocery store now. When the milkman showed up, you knew, if the milkman came serving orange juice, you would have been scared. Hold on now. You would knew what to expect when he showed up at your door. Why are we acting brand new like we don't know who the devil is? Like you don't know what he showed up for, to steal, kill, and destroy, or to lie to you about your life and your future. Now here it is, the world's way leads to death because the world wants to have pity parties. The world wants to have uh, sad conventions. The, the, the world wa wants to, to do all of these things to get that thought stuck in your mind so you get in the paralysis of analysis. You can't go forward or backward thinking about all of the stuff that's happening, how they did you, what you did. And sometimes it ain't even about other people. It's about what we did ourselves. That, that you got to learn how to forgive yourself. That, 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 that if God has forgiven me, why am I walking around with this monkey on my back? If God has forgiven me, why am I bearing this bear heavy, late, heavy burden when the Lord said, come unto me, all ye who, who are weary and, and need rest. And I take upon my yoke. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Quit carrying a burden that God ain't designed for you to carry. Just let go. Now, how do you let go? God says, you can't fool me. Whole lot of folks be playing around. Come on now. Come on, quit playing. God is like, it's a whole lot of people who say they sorry, they repenting, that, that want to get right, want to turn things around, but ain't no evidence. Ain't no fruits. I don't care about what nobody say. I want to see what you do. What y'all believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. Ain't that the New York way? Boy, New York, boy, it's some fast-talking folks in the big city. I digress. I digress. But, but the Lord says that there is a proper, proper and appropriate way to really show that you want to change. You want to turn things around. You want to get back right. Because you got to recognize that every other way is just leading to death. Sometimes it's a slow death. Did you know that trees are dead years before you can even see any external evidence? Some trees literally rot from the inside and die before anybody even knows it. Don't be that tree today, y'all. Go back to the text. Go back to the text. We're almost done. Go back to the text. I want you to pay attention to verse 11. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner. You, you, you felt it in a godly way. You felt it in a way that brings about salvation and produces repentance. Now, he said that, that, 
that how you really see it and you know it because he saw it in the church and he heard in the church. Look at verse 11. Seven principles. Seven principles I want to give to you today. I'm not going to preach all seven points. I'm going to list them for you and just talk about them briefly. If y'all give me, shouldn't take me more than about seven to ten minutes and we're getting out of here. Seven principles from verse 11. I didn't make this up. First, when everybody say diligence. Look what it says, what diligence it produced in you. Second one, say clearing of yourselves. Clearing of yourselves. Second thing it says, what clearing of yourselves. Third thing, what indignation. Fourth thing, what fear. Fifth thing, what vehement desire. Sixth thing, what zeal. And then the seventh, what vindication. I want to break those things down real quick. All right? Now, diligence, I'm going to just give you the translation. These seven things, we're going to get out of here. First one is about diligence. Diligence is better translated just earnestness, a carefulness. That when I've sinned and I've messed up and I've gotten off track, it's time for me to evaluate myself. Because most of the time, now sometimes let's just tell the truth, that we intentionally sin. There's some stuff. Now, that's different. I'm glad somebody going to tell the truth. Don't have pastor in here looking bad all by himself. So, some stuff you intentionally do, a lot of stuff you get led into. That's why the model prayer, Lord, lead us not, what? Deliver us from evil. Right? There's that, that some of that stuff that we, we, we slip into and we get caught up just because we ain't being diligent and being careful. And we ain't paying attention. And, and, and we're treating things that we know we wrong with a level of indifference. And, and, and what he says is that when you're really sorry, you got to reevaluate how you handled yourself. Was I not being careful to allow somebody to lie? Was I not being diligent about who God created me to be and listen to what somebody else said I was? Was I not being careful enough about guarding my, old, uh, uh, my own soul salvation? Because a lot of times we get caught up, what? Just not paying attention. Not being careful. That often the signs are there. They told you who they were. They showed you who they were. Y'all got that point. Let me move on. <laughs> First one, that if I'm really trying to get stuff right and fix it, I got to be diligent. I got to be more careful. Y'all heard the expression, if you get me once, shame on you. Twice? George Bush, I, I, uh, uh, there's a spraying. Uh, I know they got it in Texas. I think they got it here in Tennessee, too. Something. But y'all know what he was saying. You get me once, shame on you. You get me twice, shame on me. Because I know, don't. Don't put yourself in that situation. Second thing is a clearing of yourselves. And it's translated as, as looking for a defense or answer. That, that it, 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 it's, it's that a clearing of yourself, like a clearing of your conscience. An evaluation. That you can't really know how you messed up until you spend time thinking about it. So that you can clear it up and clear it out. I give y'all a prayer every time I preach. Lord, if you find anything in me that should not be. Lord, remove it right now. Because I don't want nothing getting in the way of your people hearing from you. And I do that in preaching, but you got to do that in your life. Look, what are the things that are holding me back, holding me down? What I need to clear myself of? What do I need to reset? What y'all notice how sometimes that if you don't clear yourself, how pipes in your house can get clogged up, and and if you would have just done a little draino, y'all ain't gonna help me. Spent thirteen dollars. Now you got to call in a plumber to replace a whole section of pipes. Y'all ain't praying with me because you have not spent time trying to clear yourself. Trying to figure that thing out. Are y'all praying with me? Second thing, clear, you clear yourself. That means that you get your conscience right. 
you 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 start to 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 to, to get to, to to this next place. The third one. This is my favorite one. Indignation. Indignation. That that just means like a a heightened level of annoyance, anger, frustration, almost to where you're ready to fight. You, 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 somebody get, get indignant yes. we slip up and say they're getting ignorant <laughs> it, it, it's the same thing though right it's, it's I get so caught up and, and so angry and so annoyed and here's the problem is that a lot of us cannot change and will not change until we get angry about our current situation the Bible says be angry just don't sin if you're taking notes you want to write this down Anger is the energy of change. Anger is the energy of change. Most stuff in your life don't change till you get angry enough to do something about it. Man, you could talk all day till you blew in the face. I was in here complaining about how I couldn't fit none of my suits. Yo, for real, y'all, I was getting depressed. Spent all this money on these clothes. I can't wear it. I'm wearing a blazer and some different pants every day trying to mix and match so y'all don't figure out what's going on, Sister Stella. <laughs> that just went through a season. I just got lazy. I'm going to just tell you the truth. I quit working out, quit eating right, quit doing what I was supposed to do. And as a consequence, I couldn't fit yes. none of my clothes. My church clothes is a problem. And one day I got so mad... To where I finally said enough is enough. Yes. No, I ain't cut out McDonald's all the way yet. No. no, I don't eat McDonald's that much no more, though. I am trying to eat healthier and cleaner. I am doing better. But this is the point. This is what I'm playing. Is that the Bible says be angry, just don't sin. Remember, Jesus got angry in the house of the Lord. And he flipped over tables, made a whip of cords, and ran people out. That we ought to have, a, the second thing says, with anger for a fervent desire and zeal, we're getting there. But some stuff ought to make you mad enough to do something about it. And I got I to take a moment to pause to talk about our nation for a second. Did you know that repentance is the first word of the gospel? When John the Baptist came up, yes, yes. repent. <laughs> Jesus' first sermon, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Peter's first sermon on the day of Pentecost, repent. That repentance is part and parcel with the faith. That, 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 that the repent, I'm giving us the seven principles of what a turnaround actually looks like. This is the problem with America. We've never repented from our two original sins. That, that when you come and steal, kill, and destroy the people who were already here. And without them, you wouldn't even be here because they taught you how to eat corn. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. They, they taught you how to survive off of the land. Y'all ain't talking to me up in here. That, that was the first sin. Then the second sin is because the Native Americans knew the land too well. The white folks figured out they couldn't enslave them. So what they did, they sent some ships to the west coast of Africa. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. And, and then brought black and brown folks back from the Caribbean, up South America, Central America. We didn't land on, land on Plymouth Rock. Oh, I love my church. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock, y'all. Plymouth Rock. I'm, I'm trying to get to the point, y'all. Y'all remember the Malcolm X movie? Had all them people out there. He was like. I'm getting so young, see on the screen. He was like, <laughs> said, that's too much power for one black man. We got to get back there. We got to get back there. But this is the point that America was built on violence. That's right. That's right. That this ain't the first time there's been an, an, an assassination attempt. They've been successful several times in this country. That, 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 that we got people who care more about your right to bear arms than being a good believer and loving, on your, loving your neighbor. And I think, I think, I think it was Malcolm who said something like that. One day, the, what is it, the rooster's going to come home? The chicken's going to come home to roost. 
got to be careful. We got to pray for our nation that just a few inches the other way. Who knows where we be right now? Because there's a whole lot of gun-toting MAGA maniacs looking for a reason. We're living, we're living in some difficult days and times, which is why it's so important for believers to be convicted on what's right and to stand up for what's right and know the word. Thank you, Sister Essie. One thing, I, 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 just, just briefly, I'm moving on, I'm briefing on. One of the most hurtful experiences in my life happened because good people saw bad things happen and didn't say nothing. Wow. Wow. I'm going to say that again. Yes. One of the most devastating things that happened in my life wasn't what that person did to me. It was what everybody saw happening and nobody said nobody nothing. Said no. So here we are, that a part of it has to be the indignation that comes when you get angry enough to say, I'm tired of seeing our black and brown brothers killed on the streets. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck because the system has been set up against me. And until you get angry as an individual, till we get angry as a people, we ain't doing nothing but talking and wasting our breath. Because what happens is, once I get to the place of indignation and, and I'm angry enough to do something, then I love this fourth one that comes in. That's when fear ought to set in. Now, the indignation is, 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 is easy when somebody has sinned against us. But what about when you've sinned against God? What about when we've messed up? One of the things that helps you to keep from messing up is when you have the proper perspective and reverence of God. You do know that God neither sleeps nor slumbers. And we go around here playing and pretending like God ain't watching. God see everything that we do. He knows the thoughts you think. He knows the places you go that you thought nobody saw you that you hope nobody ever finds out about. God knows it all. Somebody was telling me the other day, I can't remember what it was. Uh, what was it? Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm going to just make something up. I can't remember what they said. <laughs> I'm giving you an illustration. It's an illustration. It's a parable. And I don't forgot, man. Oh, fear. Fear and reverence of God. That one, one of the things uh, somebody said is, I told them that. This is a true story. I do remember this. The reason I will not do 23 and Me is because I don't want them having a registered copy of my DNA. All right? 23andMe or Ancestry.com. Because what happens is, in this day of forensic evidence, that if they get your DNA, they can plan and do all type of things. I'm going to cause so much problems in the world. I already know. I'm not going to give them anything to set me up. All right. Now, now here it is. The point that I was making about fear is th it's not so much that I fear them, but I recognize their power. I recognize what they can do. Now, watch this. If I can recognize the power of the government and govern myself accordingly, how much more should we fear God? Who has no equal? How much more should we feel God? Who, who going to tell God to stop? Who going to make God repent? Who going to tell God, hold up, God, chill out, man, you're doing too much? Nobody. Don't you know we are sinners in the hands of an angry God who at any moment could withdraw his hand of protection? And you don't think it's insulting to God that we go around acting like he don't exist? Treat people any way you want? Say whatever you want to people? Like, don't you know that's God's child? Don't you know how much God loves you? Don't you know how much God loves him? And you ready to fight if somebody say one cross thing to your kids. Oh, I can't get no help up in here. Y'all going. You'll act a fool for your kids. You don't think God will act a fool for you? 
And then if you his kids, I grew up in that house. They they believe the Bible too much sometimes. That that spare the rod, spoil the child. They fully believe that scripture, y'all. <laughs> it was some stuff my mama had to beat out of me. I can I tell the whole truth. Some stuff my daddy had to beat out of me, y'all. To where you see him coming, you straighten up. Why we ain't got fear for God like that? That if you truly are repenting, you sorry, you trying to get it right, you got to have a different perspective on the Lord. We got to quit playing God, y'all. Now, again, that negative and positive that I got to fear when I'm wrong, but I got to know who's on my side when I'm right. <laughs> so that the world would fear and know. All right. I'm going to bring these, these last three. Fear, which we talked about, vehement desire and zeal. Yeah. Vehement desire, a longing, a zeal. That means that you got to have a passion to get right what you got wrong. That you have to correct and fix. Remember Zacchaeus when he repented? He said, I tell you what, God, I'm going to repay everything I stole and then give back some with interest. There's a lot of people who want to come back, want to be back, but don't want to go through the repentance process. It ain't just enough to show up. When you've done wrong, you got to say, I'm sorry. This is what I've done. I know that I did it because until somebody says it, they can't take accountability for it. And that's the problem in this world today. People want to throw stones, but don't want to take accountability. People are not aware of how their actions have fed into a situation, how they've been the one throwing gasoline on the fire. So, so there has to come that point of recognition where I fear God and I'm now filled with a longing, a vehement desire, a zeal to get right what I got wrong. That's how you really know somebody has repented. Don't, don't just come up in my face smiling, I'm sorry. No, show me you sorry. Quit talking to me the way you talk to me. Quit treating me the way you treat me. Quit looking at me the way you look at me. If you really sorry, there ought to be some evidence. And then the Bible says that it, it can't just be passive. It says a vehement desire. The Bible says a zeal. That means the person got to feel that you serious. You got to show that you for real. That's how you know. You know when somebody playing. How much more do you think God knows when we playing? And this is why it's so important. I'm closing, y'all. I'm closing. I'm closing my book. Make sure I got my last point. I think I got everything. Oh, I'm coming back to vindication. I ain't forgot that one. That's my clothes, y'all. That's my clothes. Yep, I think I hit pretty much everything. But I do want you to remember this. This is, this is a quote from me. Anger is the energy of change. Ain't nothing going to change till you get angry enough to do something about it. The Bible says, be angry, just don't sin. Now, this is why you got to go through this process. It's so important to be diligent, clearing of yourselves, indignation, fear, vehement desire, zeal, so you reach the seventh principle, which is vindication. You know what I mean to be vindicated? It's almost like the Central Park Five. That, that after all of that trash they talked, give them the electric chair. They murder us. They kill us. This is what's wrong with our youth and in our society. Didn't it feel good when the record got set straight? It did. It take, uh, uh, Deacon G said it took a long time. Sometimes it do take a long time. But the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. <laughs> that a lie may last a long time, but a lie can't last always, y'all. That, that when you're right and you know you're right and you're standing on the side of right, you got to know that God will vindicate you. God will forgive you. God will set you free. 
So, so the first interpretation is vindication, being set free, being vindicated, that when I repent now, I ain't got no reason to be guilty no more. I have no longer given the devil a foothold to play around in my mind. It's these unconfessed sins that the devil attaches to and latches on. And uses them as ammunition to assault your mind and your emotions on a daily basis. That's what the devil is doing. Trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But I love the second interpretation or translation of vindication. The other one is revenge. Yeah. That, that, that. When we get it right, the text seems to suggest... That's our vengeance on the devil. Oh, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. That when I'm right, I get it right. I turn it around. No, not only am I vindicated, not only do I feel better, but you telling me I get to give one back to Satan after all the hell he done calls in my life, I get a chance to get him back, y'all. Every time you healed, you getting the devil back. Every time you got a smile on your face while you catching hell on your job, but you showing up on time, vengeance is mine, declares the Lord. You getting the devil back. I got to leave you now, saints. But, but, but let that word sit in your soul. I'm for real. I ain't closing to nothing. I'm just done. Because I don't want you to miss this last point. Don't, don't miss it. That when we go through that process, when we get serious, I'm just trying to tell you life starts to feel a little bit lighter. Food tastes a little bit better. You get stronger for the journey because now the devil ain't really got nothing to mess with me no more. On. Now I, I got a chance that every time I get it right, I can get the devil back. How much stuff the devil done stole in your life? How many sleepless nights he's caused? How many times the devil done got in the middle of your relationships and people you love, you beefing with and you don't even know why? How many times has fear deprived us from applying for that new job? Has fear kept us from starting that business? Kept us from writing that book? I want to tell you, saints of God, this message is so important. This message is so important. Do right and get right. And as we do that, we get the devil back. And this only applies to anybody who commit the devil done had a way in my life. So much unnecessary pain and grief and drama, depression, stress. But it all starts with the first word of the gospel. Lord, I'm sorry. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, we thank you for this word today. With our heads bowed, but our hearts humbled. Our heads bowed, but our hearts looking to you, O oh Lord. Help us to not just be hearers, but in fact doers of your word. Lord, all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. We didn't all said the wrong thing to people done some things we're ashamed of embarrassed by some stuff we look back and we don't even know what, what was I thinking yes, yes. but Lord we thank you that your grace is great enough that your mercy is deep enough to embrace us to receive us we thank you that your blood was powerful enough that as you hung bled and died on the cross for us that our sins may be forgiven. That we may be in right relationship with you. We thank you that you loved us that much. Now, Lord, help us to love you that much. Help us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, to be free from that which had us bound. To be delivered from that which is trying to block our blessings. 
from that which is keeping us from a closer relationship with you, O Lord. We ask you now in the name of Jesus, take us through the process that we may arrive at the place of vindication, arrive at the place of a clear conscience where guilt no longer has us bound. Lord, help us this week reveal to us if there's some stuff we hold on to that we need to let go. Some stuff that may be holding us down, holding us back. Because, Lord, we want your best blessings in this season. We want your presence in this season. We want a new level of relationship. So, Lord, we searched all over, tried everything else, and it's our testimony. Ain't nobody like Jesus. Ain't nobody like you. And we thank you now, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus. We do pray. And all those who could said together, amen, 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 and amen again. The doors of the church are open. Maybe there's one today who wants to give your life to Christ. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you say, I want to be a part of the Mount Olive Baptist Church. You can come on your Christian experience. You can come a letter and come as a candidate for baptism. We'll baptize you and you don't even have to join our church. I just want you to be baptized. I want your soul to be saved. But the altar is open. If you need prayer, if you need Jesus, you need a church home, there's plenty good room. Help me with the words. Some folks will silver and gold. Julius. Turn the yellow mic up. Yellow mic up. And the red. Yellow and red. Can we take it from the top? Take it from the top. Come on. Some folks. This is my favorite part, y'all. The going. The road gets tough. The going gets tough. And, and the going gets tough. And the hills are too high. Oh, I saw.
Come on, last time. The road is rough and the going is tough and the hills are too high. I saw. Come on, come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're getting ready to go. I just want to do a closing prayer, a closing prayer. You can stay seated. Y'all can sit down if y'all want to. Just a closing prayer, closing prayer, closing prayer. Was anybody blessed from the message today? Anybody encouraged? Anybody helped? This is our ministry assignment. I'm going to say this. This is our ministry assignment. How many of us run across people, you can just look at them and tell something ain't right? The Lord has laid on my heart that a lot of it is because people holding on to stuff. A lot of people just got stuff they ain't dealt with. Ain't never trusted nobody to talk to them about it. Ain't never talked to the Lord about it. Now, we got to be healed and delivered so we can tell somebody, brother, I've been there. Sister, I've been there. I know what it is to be so depressed that you don't want to go on. I know what it is to not want to get out the bed in the morning. I know what it is to feel like everything and everybody is turning on you and turning against you. But let me tell you what I did. Had a little talk with Jesus. Told him all about my problems and, and my troubles. And I can't remember the rest of the words, but he answered. He heard my faintest cry. And he answered. Bye. Any witnesses? Any witnesses in the house today? That God can and God will. I love you, Mount Ali. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. To those who are viewing online, we thank you for sharing with us on this worship experience in beautiful Brownsville, Brooklyn. And Mount Ali Baptist Church, the lovingest and eatingest church in Brooklyn. Amen. <laughs> but we want you to know you could have been anywhere in the world today, but you chose to be here with us. We want to just say thank you. If you haven't had a chance, four ways to give. Don't forget about us as great ministry that we're trying to do. Don't be somebody who just watches our service. Every time I go across the country, oh, I'll be watching y'all, I'll be watching y'all. I'll be like, I ain't see your name on the giving roster. <laughs> you can't watch Netflix for free. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Amazon Prime ain't free. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. The Word Network TBN, that's on paid cable. I can't get no help up in here. We're trying to do great work. We're asking you to partner with us so that we continue the great work in Brownsville and the work of the Mount Ali Baptist Church. All hearts and minds are clear. Happy birthday again to Sister McCray. Happy, happy birthday. So good to see each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray that your time together has... Our time together has made you better. Standing all over the building, standing all over the building as we get ready to close out in prayer. Don't forget Saturday. Don't forget Saturday. For the men, for the men, Saturday, 9 o'clock, Lindenwood Diner. And 
Somebody better get me some crab legs. I want some crab legs. Crab legs for breakfast. Just the men. Just the men. But we really encouraging our youth to be here for choir rehearsal at 1130. Choir rehearsal at 1130. 1130 to 1. Afterwards, we're going to have a big game day. Everybody's welcome to come. Please bring out as many youth as you can. Want to see you, Corey. Want to see all of you as best as we can. Amen? Amen. Have you looked at the person next to you and tell them God loves you? And so do I. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Lord, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. We thank you for this day that we have never seen and will never see again. Lord, help us to not just be hearers, but doers of your word. We believe you got something different in store for us. And Lord, we can't get different if we don't be different. We can't receive different if we're unwilling to go to different places and spaces. So Lord, grow us up. We thank you for the helper of the Holy Spirit that tells us not just when we wrong but even when we right and we thank you that we're not in this faith journey alone but indeed you walk with us and talk with us and tell us we are your own so now lord as we go from your gathered people to your scattered people rest rule and abide with each of us until we meet again and lord tonight if you be so kind let every hour of sleep Give us two hours of rest that we may continue to be builders of your kingdom. In that name that is above every name, the mighty, the marvelous, miraculous, majestic, magnanimous, and magnificent name of Jesus the Christ. All those who could set together, amen, amen, and amen again. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Go in peace. It's only 108. I didn't do too bad. It's only 108. Amen. Amen. <laughs>